where you've recently heard the narrative right about like 343 doesn't want to hire bungee people so like that we saw halo follower talked about this and stuff like that right and which i found just kind of odd because like 343 literally brought on joseph staten during the development of halo infinite yes it was the last year of the whole thing and like a little bit into like the launch of the game as well but he is a crucial one of the most crucial people at 343 brought on for halo infinite and so there's been this narrative going around saying they're like oh 343 doesn't hire bungee people and i'm like mm, clearly that's not true anymore because they literally have brought on two bungee people before just say and paul baritone who are both no longer with the studio uh recently 343 brought on they have a new lead game designer who worked at bungee and creative assembly LinkedIn profile says doing game direction on a Halo experience and giving the Covenant back their bomb. Which just makes you go like Halo 2 Anniversary 2.0. Just saying. <laughs> so like 343 brings on Bungie people. They did with Joe Satan. They did with Paul Baritone. Then they did with this new guy, right? He worked at Creative Assembly and Bungie. Uni kind of clapped back a little bit here saying, Dang, I thought Number Company didn't hire people from Rope Company. That was like, yeah, that's very true. I think now it's true. But a very notable former Bungie employee did kind of uh, be like, well, there is this. Because John did continue saying, uh, Carly, but these rumors have been always been sad. Anyone who has worked at either studio knows how many people get hired for, from the other. Good talent goes where they want when they want and both studios jump on the opportunity to hire the talent when it becomes available true we've seen this action speak louder than words paul russell here former key developer at bungie i can't remember exactly paul russell's role hey he's an environmental artist yeah from 1998 to 2010 so basically like the core years of bungie he was there as an environmental artist. Probably like the guy who made all of it because back then the team were, teams were just much smaller back then. He clapped back a little bit on uni saying, hey John, so there might be some misunderstanding and a time lapse. In 2010, one of the reasons I didn't get the 343 gig was they didn't want anyone instrumental in the creation of the original game. As far as I know, skilled task specialists were welcomed saying also i have no idea what happened after 2010 i was told no bungee people and the elaboration was what i said above specifically they worried about my objectivity regarding the new art direction this translated to all bungee original creative team programming was agnostic a lot of years have passed of course devs are professional and friendly across studios any friction between 343 and Bungie is only between lawyers, true. Uh, there was a very specific team philosophy at 343 that clearly loosened over time. Fans need to stop arguing about this seriously. So Paul's like, both sides are right on this one, basically. <laughs> Paul's like, y'all need to stop crying about this because that was an old thing. The old guard at 343 didn't want people that were crucial to the creation of halo to be working at 343 kind of understandable even though they did still bring some bungee people over like uh frank o'connor was one of the original bunch of people that came over to 343 right but i think yeah like an environmental artist when you have a completely new art style coming into the game there's going to be some conflicts there and i think also another reason why 343 original 343 didn't want to bring bungee people over is because there might be a thing where like you got the new boss that came in right and they have a new vision of what they want to do with halo and you have some old guard of bungee people working at the same company where employees might probably value the bungee employees ideas more than the new 343 manager's employee uh, ideas, right? Meaning there might be some lack of respect for new management, I guess is the way to put it. You know, they, they would rather listen to the four budget employee rather than the new 343 guy, you know what I mean? So I think it could be a little bit of that kind of going when it comes to like the politics of the whole thing, because that's something you need to take in consideration when building out teams, right? Will the employees listen to management or will they listen to like a guy who's maybe more of a creative director who used to work at Bungie rather than like Bonnie Ross, you know what I mean? And clearly we saw like when, since 343 is taking charge of Halo, they wanted to make their version of Halo. They wanted to, you know, you saw with Halo 4, 
how much they wanted to separate themselves from Bungie because it was like not even close to being the same game, right? Like wildly different between Reach and Halo 4. Like not, not even, they didn't even feel like the same game. It seems like both sides are right. And I think since John has been, since Unishek has been at 343, that tone has probably changed a lot. Clearly it has. They've brought on legitimate, like crucial, like key Bungie employees to 343 since Munichek has been there. So since he's been there, he's like, this is just completely false. And he's like, I literally have worked here for like, what, nine years, right? He's like, I've never heard anything like this. So he's probably like, this is a bunch of BS. But when 343 first opened, that's what Paul heard, right? No crucial Bungie people. Maybe it's like, the, the, but the people who are technically skilled, right? Like a programmer, right? They can be brought on, but maybe people who have more artistic decisions that would conflict with what 343 wanted to do. They didn't want to bring those people on. So like all of that kind of makes sense to me, right? From like a new management perspective. It does seem like with 343 and Bungie, there might have been the the old guard, the upper management, you know, the, the decision makers over at Bungie were not brought on. Really just to avoid any form of conflict of interests or just conflict of different opinions when it comes to art stuff. Because clearly 343, they're like, we're changing Halo. We're making it into Call of Duty because we need to compete with Call of Duty. Because at the time, what, 2012? Call of Duty was the shooter to play back in 2012. So why wouldn't you try to implement some Call of Duty mechanics over to Halo, right? That would make sense from an upper management, like director level kind of thing, right? People are loving what Call of Duty is doing. They love perks, they love kill streaks, they love custom loadouts. And so why wouldn't they try to bring that over to Halo? But when you homogenize products together like that, you lose the importance of why people play the other game, right? If you're trying to make Halo like Call of Duty, but then people will just probably stick to playing Call of Duty because that's what you're trying to copy, clearly. Yeah, if Halo maybe stuck to its guns, it was like trying to be more of a unique experience rather than just being a sci-fi version of Call of Duty, you know? <laughs> With like aliens that you shoot instead of uh, enemy players, you might see a little bit more of a reason why you would play Halo over Call of Duty rather than trying to homogenize that gameplay because there was a the down to like the minute details of like the multiplayer of Halo 4, right? When it came to like, the, they went with view kick over D scope in Halo 4, and I have always hated view kick in Call of Duty. Even like when I was like a hardcore Call of Duty player, when I played like almost like every day, especially like, like Modern Warfare 2 to like Black Ops 1, played it a ton back. Played Call of Duty all the time, and I hated view kick. And then when they brought it into Halo, I was just like, bruh. So frustrating with that stuff. It was like literally like Halo 4 was just change for the sake of change really, right? Like we had loadouts, you had kill streaks, perks, view kick instead of d-scope, you know, having to lead your shots, right? Understanding weapons, like especially with like the battle rifle, we had to like lead your shots during strafing. So then like people who understand both the bullet travel better, people who understood, you know, how to aim their weapon properly were rewarded. That was taken away with Halo 4, right? With a hit scan battle rifle. Line up the head and click, right? That's all you need to do. Which then also messes up the gameplay when it comes to long range engagements in Halo, right? Because nowadays, like with, uh, with the hit scan weapons, it makes it something like if you have a long line of sight, like BTB has, and you're using hit scan weapons, like people are just gonna be picking you off from across the map the entire time. That's the big difference, right? When you play Blood Gulch in Combat Evolved compared to like Halo 2 Anniversary or even Halo Reach, right? Because Halo Reach had a hit scan DMR. A map like Hemorrhage, Blood Gulch doesn't work with hit scan weapons. It's actually painfully terrible to play. Projectile weapons, it's pretty dang fun. In fact, it's a goat map when you have projectile weapons. Little changes like that make a huge difference like when it comes to map design as well, right? They added an in infinite sprint when this game, which people were on the, didn't like sprint in reach because it was horribly implemented. And then they elongated the maps, infinite sprint, right? You could just sprint away from all your problems in the game. It was so many things that changed with Halo 4 that just people just hated. And so kind of rounding it back to what we're talking about, right? With not bringing in Bungie people, because when you're making these significant type of changes to the gameplay, you don't think a Bungie person is gonna be like, hey, Maybe we shouldn't do that because this was how we did it in the past and it worked. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could totally see that conflict happening, which could then be the reason why they didn't bring Bungie people on when they first made 343. And I think it also lines up with what Paul was saying. So, I mean, I was told no Bungie people. I think there's even a story, I think it might have been Paul Russell as well, 
where I, I think he, after I had an interview, he was waiting in the parking lot for like an hour plus or something like that to hear back. And then he just came back with him saying, no bungee people. That's a pretty rough thing to hear, right? Girls like, that's like, wait, I didn't, I would have gotten hired if I didn't have this name attached to me. That seems a little unfair, right? That's a context. I think that's very needed for what we're talking about when it comes to like no bungee people. And clearly that sentiment has changed, right? With Paul Baritone, that was brought on, Joseph Stadium was brought on. And now you have this new guy who worked at Creative Assembly and Bungie previously, two classic Halo titles now working at 343. Obviously there was a culture change that happened there. So things have gotten better, you know, at the at 343 when it comes to working within the shadow of Bungie and Halo, right? As 343, because clearly 343 didn't want to be under Bungie's shadow when it comes to developing Halo, but you're, you're going to be, no matter what, public opinion, right? People are gonna remember the, the original trilogy very fondly.